name is Doug Druga. I'm the golf course superintendent at Weeburn Country Club. We're located in Darien, Connecticut. Been the golf course superintendent here going on almost 20 years. Um, this is our 19th season. We've done many things. We hadn't touched the greens per se, other than just aerification type processes in, in that time. And our goal was to, to look for a way to, to try to mitigate the, the effects of heat and humidity uh, to provide as consistent condition um, as we could for the members in the short window of golf that we have here in the Northeast. Um, so as part of that, we got together, put a plan together, um, and we looked at every, every tool that we could use to bring this uh, plan to fruition, and part of that was the precision air units. The project started, it was last September, so a lot of our greens are approaching a year old, um, some not quite yet. Uh, but, uh, you know, as, as far as success, we feel like it was a pretty successful project. Um, all, all good things, everything trending up uh, through the year. Uh, the units, I'd say, you know, we're still learning how to, how to use them. Uh, but the, the biggest thing for us is the, uh, the things that we didn't realize, as in the amount of water that's held in those USGA profiles even after you, you know you get a significant rainfall in the flush. Um, the, the suction, the, the ability to be able to clean that entire cavity out, if you will. From what we see, the things that we saw in terms of root mass in, in actual depth of rooting, we had never seen that before. So absolutely has something to do with the the growing medium and in the in the gravel layer all those all those components but we really feel like the the fact that we're constantly moving air exchanging air whether we're pulling through or pushing air in has has helped us be where we are right now um, consistently day to day uh, you know we feel that uh, it's, we've, we've reached something this year that we weren't ever able to do before. Ours run 24-7 primarily in the heat of the summer. If we're not in AC pushing air conditioned air into the profile, we're in suction mode. So we would run a, for, on a daily basis as we do our, our prep in the morning. We would put greens in, in a suction mode, do our prep, whatever that might need to be. And then we would transition right into AC and, and we leave them there. Um, we're seeing anywhere from, you know, depending on air temperature, we're seeing 15 to 20 degree drop in, in air going into that, into that system underneath the green. So it's, it's, it's significant. You know, Mother Nature is still undefeated, will always be, uh, but again, this, this helps us tame that to, to the best of our ability and, and, and provide a, a consistent surface um, that I'd say we don't have to worry as much about as you did in years past. Uh, this year alone, I think rainfall totals, I mean, we're at least a foot to foot and a half more rain than we've ever had to this point. Um, and I think the fact that we have these units, and the, we have the ability to remove moisture on top of just the natural drainage that comes along with the USGA green, um, I think puts us that much further ahead from a day-to-day, -day, uh, you know, from a day-to-day -day playability standpoint. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to take these units completely away and have its own, its, its own control, central control system, its own platform, if you will. Uh, we did not want to incorporate it into the irrigation system and, and manual and run that Via, the, via our central irrigation. Um, so we worked, it's a new system, but it's old technology. Uh, it's just a PLC based controller. Um, it allows us to virtually do anything that we want to do with each green, or we can do it broad stroke and do the same thing to all the greens in terms of programming. Um, it's, it's as simple as writing a, a little logic statement and what if statement to do this, if this, do that, if that type thing. Um, again, it's new. I don't. I, we are the first ones to use that control panel, 
uh, but it's old technology. It's been around forever. Uh, I'm Mike Drown, one of the assistants here at Weeburn Country Club. Uh, this here is our iPad that we help to use control our precision air units here. Um, basically give you an overlay. We have our map here with all of the unit locations on it. Uh, you can go in. Each hole has its own screen. You have discharge, suction, cool, RC heat, which runs off of our irrigation water, or the two electric heats. You can turn each one individually on from here, but if you want to turn suction on, we also have the option to go back to our main status overview and hit the master suction on button. So now you can return to the map to see it working. Should turn on each unit. The first unit is unit one and five, which is a unit that shares two greens. So one and five should turn on at the same time. And it's on a time delay. So now I think it's 15 seconds. Each unit should turn on. So now number two's on. Next to go would be three. And it just goes in order from there. We also have a master suction off button, which allows you to just turn off every single unit at the same time. So I'll turn master suction off now. And if I go back to the map, they should all be transparent again to show you that they're off. Yep, there they go. We also have a high temperature alarm, low flow alarm, and a suction high temp alarm. So if you were running either the unit in cool or just a normal day in suction or something like that, the high temp, you can set it. We have ours set at 90 degrees. So if for some reason it hits that temperature, it'll shut the unit off automatically. Uh, the low flow, that low flow alarm would be for if you're running suction. Uh, if you're running suction, you can set it. We have ours set at 500 cubic feet per minute. That tends to mean that maybe there's water in the pipes. It's not sucking enough air out. There might be an issue out there. It'll shut the unit off for you so you don't have to worry about that. You'll get an alert. It'll send you an alarm saying there's an issue with unit number one. Go out there, take a look and the suction high temp as well because you don't want to pull that hot air through the soil. So once it hits that we have our set at 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it hits 90 degrees it'll shut the unit off. Here is our master status page. This gives you a readout of every single unit, uh, the temperature on each unit, and the airflow on each unit as well. This will also tell you if there is an alarm, rain alarm, or any other issue that could be going on out there as well. We looked at the VFD. Um, just one, it's just better for the equipment. Um, and two, we're able to actually get cooler temperatures um, because we can slow the unit down uh, rather than uh, mechanically do it I guess you will with the slide valve situation we can now we can actually slow the slow the units down themselves so it keeps the air in the unit longer um, allows it to cool uh, to a lower temperature and then exit and enter our enter the profile that system alone has gotten us probably an extra 10 or 15 degrees from a cooling standpoint the quality of the equipment, I don't think you can compare it to anything else. It's, it's, it's significant. If you look inside the vaulted systems, we were able to incorporate both Precision's vaulted unit and their above ground unit. Um, there's holes where we just can't, from an aesthetic standpoint, have above ground units. Um, but there's quite a few that we could. So we were able to, we were able to implement both of those, the above and the vaulted. Um, and from a vaulted unit, it's, you know, it's like a laboratory, so it's, it's, it's pretty impressive. The level of mechanical inputs are, um, from a standpoint of mowing and rolling, just the, 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 uh, 
the drastic change in the amount that we have to do that in order to achieve green speeds, um, it's, it's so much less, so much less. It's extraordinarily different. When temperatures go up, humidity change, you know, you get into the, like the, the dog days of summer, it's really difficult to manipulate that and be consistent with green speeds. I don't care where you are. Um, it's hard. It's, it's extremely difficult. And the sacrifice is usually you, you do more than what you know you should be doing and you hold your breath a little bit. Well, we don't, you know, we hold our breath, but we don't hold it as long. So it, you, you sleep a little bit better for sure. Um, from a standpoint of operation, it's not even really a discussion point from an energy standpoint, right? From a power usage or, you know, our electric bill is it, you know, it's not even looked at really. For us, it was the, the quality of the equipment was, we didn't feel it was even comparable, right? It was unparalleled to us. Um, and and the, again, it, for everything that we do, I think golf related, the service is, that is a huge component of it. Um, and, you know, Andy, Tom, they, again, they pick up the phone. It's 24-7. Um, they stand behind their product. Uh, the last thing I think anybody wants to hear, golf course superintendent wants to hear is, well, you know, we never really saw that before. That's, uh, you know, it's not my fault. You know, nobody likes to hear that. And you're not going to hear that from those guys. They are... They, they stand behind it, and um, I guess speaking for them is probably easy because I don't really think they have a lot of issues to stand behind because the quality's so good. So, uh, but they do, and if, any questions, what, whatever it may be, um, they're, they're, they're a 24-7 business. So it, it felt good, it felt good to go with those guys.